All right, guys, I'm going to show you how to use this leak down tester. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get me up to 7 PSI. I loosened the nut up on my um, my intake manifold for my carb to cause a small leak. So that way I can show you what it looks like. So here we go. You just barely got to put pressure in here just to get it up to 7 PSI. All right, I'm right at 7 now. Alright, you can go ahead, buddy. Alright, you can see here. Trying to get it in the light good to where it shows. Freaking shadow. But I mean, you can see it. It's the second line above the 5, that 7 psi. Right there. And it's holding. And it's holding 7 psi. But like I said, I made a little leak. And I'm going to show you, just because it's holding pressure, does not mean there is no leak. I loosened up this intake manifold nut right here a little bit. And I sprayed soapy water on it. And you can see the foam. It's because I poured soapy water on on the intake manifold, you want to pour soapy water all along the base gasket, which I did, zero leaks. Um, you want to pour soapy water all over, you know, the, the plug. I'm going to tell you in a minute in the next video on how to make that. Um, and you want to soapy water off the front of the exhaust too. Like whatever you use to block it, I used the old inner tube. And I bolt it, you know, I put all three bolts in, tightened it up with the inner tube so no air escapes. And I mean, you can look here. I'm still at 7 PSI. It hasn't dropped. But, I still have a little leak over here. You can see it, watch it. You can see it foam up. See the foam? See it's getting bigger and bigger right there. Right where my finger is. It's foaming up more and more and more. It's because I loosened that, that bolt up a little bit. I mean, I don't know how, I don't think that would cause any issues, but I'm still, obviously I'm going to tighten my bolt back down. And you can look here. I'm still at 7 PSI. Wish I could get this thing in a light better. There we go. Uh, that's the way I'm holding it. Yeah, I'm still right at 7 PSI. Went no no drop whatsoever. I've been recording for three minutes. So, I mean, obviously my engine has zero leaks. Um, this is brand new. Brand new engine. I just finished this thing. Actually, last night, I've been through hell and back with this engine, so I'm damn sure making sure I don't have a, any kind of leaks whatsoever in it. And here, I'll show you this here foam again over here, where it's foaming up. See, a lot more right there. That's from the soap bubbling up. But, I'm going to let the air out. You know, matter of fact, I'll just keep this video going, so that way I'm not making two, and I'll show you how to make this gauge. Very simple. Um, I wasn't about to spend 75 bucks on something that I can do myself, and the reason I'm making this is I had a bunch of people ask me after I, I made a video showing that this engine's holding pressure, I had a bunch of people ask me on you know, they want to pay me like 50 bucks, you know, 50, 60, 70 bucks to make them a leak down tester. You know, I, I'm a, I'm the kind of person, I, I like helping people out. I'm not trying to make no money off of nobody. So, this is how I made mine. I went up to Harbor Freight, and you could buy this boost gauge right here. I think it's like 12, it's like right around 13 bucks. And it's pretty nice too. Because this boost gauge comes with 
Um, all this vacuum tubing and stuff, which is, it's all clear tubing, and I used it on my wife's TRX250R. But that engine is going back into this quad, and the engine in the 250R is going into my um, drag bike, going back in that. But anyways, like I said, Harbor Freight for the boost gauge. Okay, after you get the boost gauge, you have these little T fittings right here. You can go to AutoZone and grab those little T fittings. Um, and this here piece, I got it, I think, at Lowe's. I mean, you could get it at Lowe's or Home Depot. Just go to the, um, you know, obviously plumbing section and pick that up. That's all it is. But what I did was... When I first made this, I made it for a blaster engine that I rebuilt. And this this actually fit perfect, but on the 250R, the intake's bigger. So what I did was I mean, I should have just went up and and took my intake take my intake boot off, took it up to Lowe's with me and got the right piece. But what it is is this is two pieces. This little piece right here has a nipple on the end of it, and it screws into the bigger one. So when you go up the lows, you want to take your intake boot with you, and you just want to, you know, obviously just fit each each one of the the um I don't even know what the hell these things are called honestly. I'll just call it a damn coupler. But you want to fit each coupler into the intake boot until you get the right size that fits in there snug. Almost just about like how your carburetor would. And then once you find that that piece, like it's just circle. You can see on the inside it's threaded. And once you find this piece, you know, with the, circ with the hole in the middle where you can thread a another piece into it. Then find this piece right here with the nipple on the end where you could just put the holes onto it. Um, I used um, windshield washer foot holes running from the boost gauge to this T fitting and just regular like PCV um, tubing or fuel line or whatever for a car onto this end but you just want to make sure you get when you get the T fittings you get a pack that comes with a variety of them, different sizes and stuff, so that way you can match all your lines and everything up. And I mean, they make like little clamps where you could clamp the hose, but you know, I just fill it up with 7 PSI and I just take my needle nose and clamp it off. But once I clamp it off, I'll take a little bit of soapy water on my finger and rub it over the tube just to make sure it's not leaking, which it doesn't. So. And can't remember if I mentioned it, but the exhaust side, yeah, I did. You know, I said the three bolts tightened it up. I used a old inner tube, you know, from um, my CR250. It could be from anything, uh, any kind of old inner tube. You know, just cut it to fit and put your flange or whatever on there. If you do not have a flange. Again, go to home or um, AutoZone or Murray's or something and grab a freeze plug. But what you want to do is, you know, obviously you'd have to take the engine out of the bike or quad or whatever you're working on. You have to take it up there, have a match freeze plug up to it. This one here's too small. But again, this was for the blaster. That's how small the intake side was on the blaster. So. I will stop this video and hopefully it helps people out making them a leak down tester this is like probably one of the best tools you can actually have you know with two strokes because if you end up having an air leak or something you'll be chasing jetting for ever <laughs> seriously but you know make sure you get clamps too obviously so and like I said, I mean, you could do it this way, like put, I put tape around it and a little silicone on the outside, but it slides off of there, you know, over time. I've done the leak down on this engine like five times, so just make sure you get the right one.